Who have you come out here to see tonight? Macro Blank. Macro Blank. Uh, I won't lie, I've actually just come in, <laughs> just for a drink. A lot of people have been talking about haircuts for men. Macro Blank. I coined the term barber bees because, you know, haircuts for men, it just, it just kind of makes sense. Is he a difficult man to get hold of? Yep. A couple of people started watching his videos on YouTube. They got stuck in an algorithm. My music's a mess. It's kind of a mess. That's kind of what I like about it. It is Vaporwave. It is. You're, you're wrong. You're stupid. Vaporwave has really changed my life. And they got thrown around like, like in a tumble dryer situation where they keep getting shown the same romantic busts and Greco-Roman wrestling. I'm going to make a Vaporwave album. You can do literally anything you want. Genres exist for a reason. It's still just stolen, slowed down music. We just kind of release it and pray that nothing happens. And so far, we've been all right. It feels original. Smooth jazz and down tempo. It's so relaxing. It's something you can just put on in the background. Trying to process my past. Lift music. That's all we've been listening to. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's a dish to the guy plays. That's not going to make the cut though, right? Probably, probably not, probably not. How were people dancing to this? Can you dance to this? Um, yes. That's like quite a specific visual aesthetic. Greco-Roman illustration. Cultural references. Steven Spielberg. And I think that just kills creativity. If you have a problem with it, why are you in the vaporwave scene? Like, this entire genre was built on stealing music and recontextualizing it. It's a little bit controversial doing that. The first genre that was ever born on the internet. Very web culture. I was born in the 90s myself. We're talking about a web culture here. You're trying to build up a mystique around your music. Maybe it is a persona. People hate on us. They're like, oh, it's unethical. The original artists actually get all of the YouTube money. We don't put the stuff on Spotify at all because we feel like that's kind of interfering with their market. I think I'll give the music tonight a one out of ten. It's for the aesthetic, man. I genuinely don't take credit. I kind of want people to read a little better in the descriptions and stuff. It's more about the experience for me. It's way more about the whole experience of the album. Barber Night Delight. Tonight we'll be answering some of your most poignant questions about Macro Blank and the Barber Beats slash Vaporwave genre. Just exactly who is Macro Blank anyway? What does he want from us? Why is his music so chill? Is everything really plundered? These are just some of the questions plaguing the minds of fans all over the world, from UK to the farthest, the farthest islands of the Mediterranean. How's it going? You're right. So who have you come out here to see tonight? Uh, I won't lie, I've actually just come in, <laughs> just for a drink. How's that going for you? Yeah, really good. Who's actually playing? Uh, dude called Macro Blank. Any good? He's really good actually. He's not played yet. What time's he on? He's on at 10 o'clock. Uh, what time's it now? It's about 9. You should definitely stay. Yeah, do you reckon? Yeah, it's going to be good. Alright, all right. you've convinced me, you've convinced me. Yes. What type of music is it? It's uh, Vaporwave. Okay, what's Vaporwave? Nostalgic art form, the 80s, the 90s, PlayStation 1. Fine. That's kind of why I'm here, to find out what Vaporwave is. And how would you describe that music there? Like? It's a nostalgic style of music, takes people back to their childhood memories, very woozy feeling. Imagine you're sat on a sofa playing PS1, playing Wipeout, listening to Jungle back in 1995, that's the vibe. So we're making a documentary about Vaporwave, it's Nobody Here uh, is the name of the film, like at Nobody Here is the, is the tag on Twitter. And uh, one of the questions we're asking is what is Vaporwave? It's like the hardest question in the world to answer. But I guess the simplest thing is to say it's about nostalgia. It's about um, reconnecting with the past and it's different people have different pasts. So for me as a British person growing up, I remember growing up with Jungle. I remember growing up with different types of dance music and stuff like that. And uh, I think that it's fundamentally about reconnecting with uh, a, a history or a past, maybe even that you didn't actually exist yourself. So you know how young people watch like The Goonies as a film? And they weren't around in the 80s, but there's that nostalgia for these kind of American big films and stuff. And so Vaporwave kind of takes you to a place that you maybe never went before, but you know you like it and you want to stay. Like like this guy down playing? Yes, yeah, sort of like this, but it's better than this. But <laughs> that's a diss to the guy playing. That's not going to make the cut though, right? Probably, probably not, probably not. I resonate with that. I mean, I was born in the 90s myself. I saw the Goonies. So we've been around the world. We've like been to America. Most of the artists are based in America. Like I said, like, for most people, they're looking at like everyone grew up with American films. So all that like uh, Steven Spielberg stuff, like dominated TV, whether you're from Britain or from Europe, 
like we kind of always look west for for cultural references so we've been uh, traveling the world speaking to artists who are making this kind of referential music for the past we're trying to pull together something that encapsulates a type of music that was the first genre that was ever born on the internet Every other style of music that exists, pretty much, that's got any legs in it, existed before the internet. So this is quite unique because it's very web culture. I think that makes it stand out amongst its peers. That's incredible. Could you try to describe the difference between, if there is a difference, between Barber Beats and Vaporwave? If Vaporwave, as a genre, is looking back to the past, Haircut Some Men is a guy uh, from, from Hawaii, I believe who made a style of music that probably people from the UK would think of as being quite similar to Portishead, like lo-fi hip-hop, but also like trip-hop back in the day. And I think what happened is a couple of people started watching his videos on YouTube. They got stuck in an algorithm. They got thrown around like, like in a tumble dryer situation where they keep getting shown the same videos. And they were like, how can I rediscover this feeling? The aesthetic of Barber Beats is very much romantic busts and Greco-Roman wrestling and stuff like that. And if you see it and you want to see it again, there actually weren't many artists that were doing it. And I think what happened was basically one or two artists got stuck in that YouTube algorithm and they realized that there was an there was a there was like, there's there's something that speaks to uh, it speaks to a different kind of aesthetic to other vaporwave and what's fundamentally happened is that artists have pulled together a style of music that references haircuts and men and what he was doing originally but they've taken it further and what we're doing tonight is we're celebrating that music and there's new artists like macro blank and oblique occasions art labels like ours my pet flamingo labels like allo city records who are taking this kind of vibe forward is it safe to say that ai has given birth to the genre of vaporwave and barber beats uh, i don't think ai has given birth to it but i think that ai is a place uh, in it because we're talking about a web culture here and anything technological based is is going to be tapped into and what we are seeing a lot of nowadays is people using ai um generated art uh, they're typing in prompts you know so whether it's like typing in like greek wrestling 15th century i don't know like early olympic style wrestling they're using things like ai to create artworks but i i wouldn't say the music itself is un underpinned by that but i think that the way technology is going, I think it was last week Google said that they've created, was it Google? They said they created an AI music so you could prompt it. You could prompt it like you could with an art. An AI that can create music in the style that you asked it to create. So the technology exists. Google last week, I think it was Google, they um, basically announced that they have this technology. So in the same way as you can generate art through AI right now by, by typing in prompts, so you could say, I want, um, a uh, brutalist style painting of two people by a swimming pool and it will generate art and then you can just press a button and get variations on that theme. AI has got to the point now where the technology exists to type in similar prompts. So you could prompt it with, I want um, a three minute piece of music at 120 BPM that sounds like Porter's head. And the AI is clever enough to do that. They've, they've spent 280,000 hours listening to music, these computers, they're able to generate that. And it, it's kind of frightening, but exciting at the same time. Because it's still an art form in the prompts that you give the technology. But because it's based on that learning, is it truly original? That's the question. Hi, I'm Tom. I've come to see everyone. So um, I work for a podcast and a blog called Future Sounds, um, and I'm reviewing the events. Um, and I'm also associated with a record label, My Pet Flamingo, and we're slinging our wares here, we're selling some records, selling some tapes. Dropping some merch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheeky bit of merch. Okay, so do you write as well? So do you write reviews? Yeah, I write reviews, I podcast, I make uh, sort of satirical vaporwave as uh, Wichita Limewire, that's my artist name. And I'm in a project called Donor Lens as well, which kind of does like pop music, dance music, a bit of vaporwave vibes as well. How did you first get into vaporwave? Oh, a long time ago, when it was, when it was popping off. I was doing like a master's in musicology um, around the time that like One of Tricks by Never was doing his thing. Um, and like, yeah, I was interested in it academically because it was like conceptually very interesting, like making art out of like plundered, like stolen stuff. That's a long time ago. And I'm long, long out of the academic game. Real world now, real world now. So I'd say probably my main project is Donor Lens, which is a duo. It's me and Jay. 
we ba we started off wanting to make like vaporwave style music uh, without using samples because we're both like instrumentalists um, and like songwriters and stuff. So we were trying to like recreate the atmosphere. Um, it's a little bit controversial doing that. It's actually kind of fundamentally at odds with what's happening at this event right now, which is like about making music with like entirely like sampled music. Over time, the Donor Lens project actually, we, we kind of broke our own rule very quickly and we do use samples quite a lot. But like, it's about blending samples with instruments and vocals and, you know, it's a bit of a sandpit. We do, we do whatever the f we want, really. We play a bit of everything, um, like uh, guitar, drums, keys. I mean, we're both producers. Like, if you're a producer and you're able to play instruments, it's useful because you can do everything yourself, like without having to hire people to do it. We have worked with loads of guest vocalists before. Um, that's like the one thing we haven't done ourselves in the past, but we're starting to do that ourselves now. Building up confidence to sing on our own tunes, you know? That's super cool. It's sort of like a disclosure, you know disclosure? Yeah, because you have to, right? Because it, it takes time whilst you're waiting for the guest vocal to come back, you know? And you can just do it yourself, or you like, you record a little demo and you think, oh, maybe this is okay, you know, maybe we can use this. And then they, they have hits with that so. Yeah, like Calvin Harris as well, with his like signature sort of deep voice. Yeah he, yeah, he probably wasn't planning on releasing that stuff. He's probably getting other people to do it. And your other project is... Um... So Dona Lens is like kind of a pop thing, like we write our own stuff. Wichita LimeWire is closer in spirit to this Barbara Evitz event. Um, so it's kind of remembering the time when I was like a kid, young teenager, like illegally downloading stuff on the, onto the family computer. And I'm sort of like trying to process my past basically uh, by like actually trying to make quite pretty music out of the music of the time, which was like pretty naff, like new metal, like Y2K era pop, which is having a bit of a resurgence, you know, that kind of thing is coming back. So Wichita, like like the place in the States, I guess it's in Kansas, and then LimeWire, like the illegal download service. LimeWire, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a dodgy pun, right? So there's, a, there's, there's like a famous old song called Wichita Line Man. It's about like a man who repairs the electricity wires. So it's like a pun on that, like, you know, I mean, I'm working on my parents' internet connection as a kid, you know, like that's what I'm kind of processing, what I'm working through, my sort of childhood memories, my corrupted childhood memories, you know? Yeah, I love all the cross-referencing in, in Vaporwave and, and, and Barber Beats. I guess, what is the difference between Vaporwave and Barber Beats? I think Barber Beats has got quite a specific visual aesthetic um, with these kind of like Greco-Roman illustrations and these kind of almost like um, sort of textbook vibes, you know, like sort of uh, anatomy textbook vibes. That's like quite a specific visual aesthetic. And I think like their sample sources tend to be like smooth jazz and down tempo, kind of chill out kind of things. Um, Vaporwave was mainly reaching for kind of 80s pop and kind of disco, like boogie kind of samples. So I guess it's kind of different sources. I mean, like Vaporwave is a decade old and Barber Beats is quite a new thing. So they're just kind of at different stages of their life cycle. I mean, my projects or our projects are a little bit controversial in Vaporwave because it's like it very much stretches the definition of what Vaporwave is. Whereas I think Barber Beats is at a stage in its kind of um, life cycle where it has a very clear identity, which is a really cool thing. It's like it has a clear visual aesthetic and you can listen to it and be like, that. that's Barber Beats. Like a lot of people think Vaporwave has kind of expanded past its boundaries and it's kind of a mess. That's kind of what I like about it because I like loads of different kinds of music and my skill set's quite varied. It's kind of the environment where I feel most at home in because people will tolerate me like uh, like making music in like my loads of different genres or like one different project sounding nothing like the other. I think Barber Beats is almost the opposite because it's very like concise and clear and tidy. My music's a mess, for better or worse, you know? <laughs> so Vaporwave fans are, in, in a sense, like some of the perfect fans because they'll accept anything. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, Vaporwave fans in, in the 2020s, for sure, um, they're really tolerant. But there's, they, there's definitely some pushback against that. And, like, um, I totally understand the pushback because, like, genres exist for a reason. But artists are always going to push at the boundaries of genres. It's like, it's up to kind of uh, critics and listeners to kind of uh, create categories and stuff. And then if those categories kind of get burst out of, then maybe, you know, recategorizing or coming up with new genre terms. I kind of think Barber Beats is one of those, to be honest, right? It's like putting a little fence around something that was that happened organically and is, you know, it's like an interesting kind of little offshoot. Um, it makes sense to kind of curate and manicure that garden, you know? Where would you say most of the feedback is coming from, like good and bad? It's all online, man. Like. Um, 
people people are often quite uh, they behave one way behind their keyboard and, and another way in real life you know like some of the spiky people are pussy cats in real life you know we're working on this documentary film the story of vaporwave I don't know if Enzo talked about that a bit and like we, we've we've come to meet people and it's like everyone's nice man you know like people have different personas behind the keyboard but you know maybe that's what it is maybe it is a persona you know and it's um you know you're trying to build up a mystique around your music especially if your music is instrumental you're not putting your own voice on it or if it's sample based if you're not showing your face building some kind of mystique behind your social media character um it's good for business or it can be good for business you know in a sense i'm surprised that this show is happening because it having a live show kind of reveals the artist and it kind of takes away some of that mystique yeah for sure i mean i think it's really nice like just go like just being able to to uh, bond with people over like a shared passion and getting to know like the person behind the music and like to nerd out it's really nice obviously there's a layer of romance that goes when an anonymous figure isn't anonymous anymore but I think I think it's a price that's that's worth paying. We are at uh, Folklore. We are here for the Barber Night Delight uh, show put on by Allo City World. It is three Vaporwave slash Barber Beats artists are going to perform. We have Rom Breaker playing right now, and then I'm going to be coming up next, Oscob, and then after that will be Macro Blank. Is this the first time you guys are, I guess, performing live in front of an audience? I think. It's the second time for me. I was invited to do the Dave um, Festival in Dresden a couple years ago. Um, I think it's the first time for Ron Breaker. I think it's the first time for Macro Blank. I'm, Macro Blank might have had another one somewhere. Yeah, I'm really excited to see everyone. I didn't realize this was something. I didn't realize that Vaporwave was something that could be even like I guess performed. Do you know what I mean? It's an interesting idea to try to transport that from like a, a, the internet space into you know the real world because it. It's so much like is birthed out of the internet, exists on the internet. So I mean, that's why you see uh, there's a lot of stupid arguments in the Twitter scene on tw uh, on uh, in Vaporwave on Twitter, and there's like so many arguments like you can't do Vaporwave live. That is, I'm like, ah, yeah, you can. It's a vibe. You can make it happen. I mean, we're making it. We're literally making it happen right now, and it's a, it's a good turnout in there. A lot of people vibing. It is a great turnout. So do you think there is there is some rules to Vaporwave or do you think there's no rules at all? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, I was having a conversation with, with the boys about this actually yesterday. It's like, I am of the camp that I think anything can be Vaporwave. Every, anything has the potential too, um, but not everything is Vaporwave. Like there's some stuff that you just can't qualify it. But if you, if you are going into the mindset of going, I'm going to make a Vaporwave album, you can do literally anything you want, I think. Like, my, my first big breakout hit, uh, like, I think in 2016 was Overgrowth, and I got a lot of shit at the time because I used samples from, like, Death Grips, Beck, um, the um, Princess Mononoke soundtrack, a lot of, like, I used some industrial, like, chainsaw sounds and one. A lot of people are like, this isn't Vaporwave, this is, this is jungle ambient, and I'm like, it is. It is Vaporwave. It is. You're, you're wrong. You're stupid. Like, you're, you, you want to put it in this little box and not go, wait, it can't, it can only be this. It can't be anything else. And I think that just kills creativity. I think anything that pushes imagination and creativity is a good thing, and that's why I love Vaporwave so much. To me, from what you just said, it sounds like you have a really like, eclectic mix of influences and you basically just breathed all of those into kind of one space. Yeah, because like, I think something that's given me a little bit of longevity over the years is I have never stuck to like one specific type of sound or one specific type of subgenre within Vaporwave because I have like, I have, you know, Signal Wave, I have noise albums, I have hard vapor albums. And that's like kind of goes back to my name, Oscob, O-S-C-O-B. It used to stand for something, uh, but not anymore it doesn't. It's just a random series of letters. And I think I just that reflects through my music of just it being anything. I love the originality. This is very fresh. Like even just talking to people in general about the genre, it, I didn't quite understand the Vaporwave that much until I came and started asking about it. And that's kind of why I'm here, I guess, is to find out what is the sound. How do people describe it when they try? One of the things I've been asking people is like, what is the difference between Vaporwave and Barber Beats? I, I, mean, I don't want you to like taste everything I say is gospel. This is just my opinion. Well, it's in my opinion that Barber Beats is a sub-genre of Vaporwave. I still call it Vaporwave. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's still just stolen, slowed down music. It's all the same thing. I... When did you start producing music? 
Um, we're using the word producing very, uh, very loose there, but uh, I think I started started back. I think in 2015, I. Uh, I I was uh, on Tumblr a lot, and I was on the mu the MU board on 4chan a lot, and then I started seeing like this Macintosh Plus album come up, and I'm like, oh, and I looked into it, and I'm like, oh, this is really interesting, and that led me to Echo Jams by Chuck Person, and so on and so forth, and then I, my best friend Devin, who also produces under the name Res and uh, more usually Dolphin Machine, um, he was way more technically proficient than me. So I like talking to him, like, do you want to make a Vaporwave album together? And then I like, I got a bunch of samples and I gave them to him and he slowed them down and I did stuff and we did back and forth. And that was Virtual High Five and that was my first release. And uh, yeah, that's that's how I started. And ever, it's, I've just been experimenting doing all sorts of different sounds since then. How many projects have you put out as Oscar? Virtual High Five, Virtual High Rise, Virtual High End, Tech Support, Overgrowth, Eating Yourself Alive, The Bedlam EP, Junkie, Abused Abuser, Space Station 5. You can't find that one anymore. There's some drama behind that. Presented with that description, Everywhere Beyond the Skybox. Uh, Tales of the F Death Frontier, Praise the Sun God. I might have missed a few, but I think that's most of them. So you've been going for a while then, huh? A little bit, a little bit. Why do you keep going? Like, what is pushing you? What is it about Vaporwave? I just like it. A necessity is the mother of invention. So when you place like restrictions and rules on yourself with what you're making, that forces you to be so much more creative with the, with the limited amount of tools that you do have. So that is like where I approach each album of mine. Like I give myself a rule, like I'm only using these kind of samplers or I'm only gonna be doing this. And so because I put that on myself, then it forces me to go like, okay, how am I gonna tell a story with this? How am I gonna build a world with this? This song is playing in the background right now. Do you know what it is by any chance? No, no, I don't. Okay. This is a new new set that uh, Ron Breaker made for this. So which, which this is all original. His stuff is all, this is all original what he's doing. So he's already going above and beyond like me and Macro Blank. Like I think Macro Blank's starting to experiment with original stuff. Me. I, on, I only want to work with samples. Macro and and um, Ron Breaker are like residents of Allo City. I'm not a technical resident. I release a lot of myself. I release a lot on other labels, um, which is fine. I don't really want to be particularly tied to anyone, but I'm really tight with these boys and I love them. And I am planning to release some, at least two things on Allo City coming up, uh, maybe in the next year. Are you up next? Yup, I'm going on in about 32 minutes. Excited? Uh, I'm about to vomit. No, I'm I'm sto. It's excitement. It's nerves. It's it's. It, this has been a long time coming, and w this really has truly been a group effort between all the boys, Chris, the label owner, uh, his wife, my wife, uh, my wife, <laughs> Borat. Haha. <laughs> Funny. It's been very cool. It's been very good, and I think uh, I think it's going to turn out really well. Thank you, Oscar. It's been great. Hey, no problem. And can I just say one final word to you? Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Who have you come out here to see today? Macroblank. So how did you discover Macroblank? Randomly browsing YouTube, it just popped up in my recommended. Anytime I just want to listen to something, I just, I just started up. What do you think of the artwork? It feels original, but it also feels like it's taking something that already exists and twists it in some original way makes it really interesting to look at. Wish I could understand the, the text so I could know the titles. <laughs> to know which tracks I really like. like I have to go to the translator to, to look up my favorite tracks. In. I was doing that a few days ago to prepare for this. Yeah, yeah. Who have you come out here to see tonight? So I've come particularly to see Macro Blank. Yeah, me too, to be honest. Sick, good choice, good choice. <laughs> Do you remember when you first discovered Macro Blank? It was actually from uh, Twitter. I just saw a, saw a tweet by Macro Blank as one of my suggested tweets and sort of fell down the rabbit hole that way into falling into more Vaporwave music. But um, it was particularly for their first vinyl releases that they were doing. So I was very interested in the sort of traction that they were gaining and the, the style of music that they did. Because I've always loved lo-fi and vaporwave and that sort of genre. So when you saw this tweet, you knew exactly what it was? No, not really. Because obviously, like, it was all, like, Japanese symbols and, like, strange artwork put, sort of repurposed. So I didn't really know at first. But then I sort of followed that to Bandcamp and then followed into Allo City World and sort of found all the other musicians from there and 
just been sort of listening through Bandcamp all the different sort of things. I love a good like musical rabbit hole. You know, you just end up. Honestly, that's my favorite thing. That's why I love this sort of stuff is because you can like find stuff you wouldn't even know existed and then spend ages just listening to all the sorts of stuff available. Uh, like I really like Macro Blank because the variance of the sort of music that he uses and samples. Uh, so it can be like from Latin, Bossa Nova, jazz to like more modern synth and vaporwave sort of genres. I actually just bought the one of the vinyls tonight, finally. Which one? Which one? It was uh, Macro Blank's, you know, the this is where I'm going to show the lack of names, not understanding, but I think that's given with the sort of titles being in Japanese. But it was the uh, the black one with the sort of samurai hooded figure in the front. Yeah, that was like one of the first ones, I think. Yes, yeah, and I love the string instruments in that. Like, I practice guitar at home, but I wish the one day be that level. <laughs> yeah, I love the sort of like arabesque sort of guitars. Absolutely, it's, it's so relaxing. It's something you could just put on in the background. Like, I often find myself listening to like Vaporwave or Macro Blank or like other musicians while just like doing household chores, you know, like washing up or cleaning the room or whatever. It's just right vibes. <laughs> so, do you know any of the other artists here tonight? No, honestly. Uh, it was, this is why I came to tonight to sort of see all the other musicians that are in that similar sort of genre and field. So, sort of expand my knowledge from there. And uh, who have you brought with you? My girlfriend, uh, Amber. She's come with me tonight. Bless her. Um, but this is actually a gift from my parents. <laughs> this is really sweet, yeah. It's like I had nothing I wanted for Christmas, so they bought me some tickets to come see this. So I'm very grateful. <laughs> You're like the most into it out of all of them. Yeah, I'd say so. They, they wouldn't understand this music. <laughs> As, as snobby as that sounds, like, if it isn't Rod Stewart, I don't think my mum cares. <laughs> Rod Stewart in Japanese? I don't know. This is what you must do. You must go home, find a Rod Stewart albums, and just slow them down by, like, I don't know, 50%. Yeah, 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 just slow There you go, mum. Yeah, why not some Japanese vaporwave? Yeah, see how you feel about that, mum. <laughs> so who have you come out here to see tonight? I've mostly come out to see Macro Blank. How did you discover Macro Blank? I'll say in September, right when I was doing work. So I do like video marketing full time and stuff like that. So sometimes when you're editing, you don't want music with words. And I always used to listen to like lo-fi esque beats like Nujibis. And then one day I was scrolling on YouTube and I see this black, red and white cover art. And it's still one of the Nazgul. And after that, I started listening to it. And the intro guitar like... <laughs> The intro guitar like it just like captivates me and then I was just there like listening to it and I was like yo let me check out more and more of the stuff I later on just started delving deep in all the macro blanks um, other albums and so the one that I can probably say is my favorite is probably macabre yeah I love macabre yeah I, I just again it's just the intro of the guitar like I just like them kind of intros it's so sick like if, if you guys haven't heard that, I don't know what you're doing It's dark, right? It's dark. I like the darker ones. Yeah, I like the darker ones as well. Uh, it's just a lot more atmospheric, I would say. Yeah, I would just say like, I don't know, it kind of helps you to escape. In a way, like, it, it helps you to like, think of other things as well. It just feels good. And then it's also better, like I said, it helps you concentrate. It helps me actually come up with better ideas as well. Um, even when I'm in like meetings with people, I put it in the background, people will be like, oh, what's that? Because it just helps everyone chill. And it's all about certain atmosphere. And I think that's why I like Macro Blank, yeah. I've done youth work where I've put Macro Blank on in the background and the kids are just kind of got on with their games and it's just such a great atmosphere. Yeah, I feel like anyone can get into it. I think it's a, it's a niche that appeals to anyone. Like, I think um, also being black, so liking like a hip hop background and stuff like predominantly as well. But I like the Vaporwave, like 80 synths that come in as well. And then also the PS1X aesthetics with the sound. And it reminds me a lot of, of Toonami. So Toonami was the slot back in because I used to live in the States so Toonami was a slot back on Cartoon Network and what would have is it would have like exclusive anime program showing so a lot of the early animes that I discovered on Toonami was like Dragon Ball Z you heard of Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, yeah. so Dragon Ball Z, um, Gundam, Yu Yu Hakusho all that kind of stuff and you also would get like old movies and that's in like later on in the day so like Ghost in the Shell, Akira 
you know, just classic old school anime movies. So, um, but in between, like the in, there was a guy who was kind of hosting it, and there was like a transmission, and then he would say, "Up coming up next, this show," and it'll have that kind of vapor wave aesthetic with it. So it kind of reminds me of that. I'm sorry if I tangent. So. <laughs> People started a sort of meme with uh, was it Macintosh Plus yeah. doing that sort of thing. There was kind of intermission music. Was this, is that the kind of thing? Yeah, that's the kind of thing. Yeah, it's under like yeah, this does kind of actually fall under a vaporwave, but in a way, it's kind of like different. I feel like it has a lot of lo-fi elements. To it. How would you describe the sound of vaporwave or barber, barber beats? Atmospheric. It just builds landscapes. Yeah. Who have you come with today? I've come with my friend Raider. Um, we discovered Macarank around the same time, so then he's always been listening and he was always eager to come with me to the show, so yeah. The luckiest thing, fun fact is, I wanted to buy three tickets, but it only allowed me to buy Max or two. I was like, oh, that must be an issue. I bought two tickets and I was the last two tickets I got. I'm, I'm glad I was here at the first show and everything. It's great to just support someone like Macro, who's been putting in a lot of work and a lot of grind to make all of us just feel good and we're all connected on the one thing which is music so music brings people together I'm Chris, I'm the uh, owner of Allo City World so Allo City started in 2015 and uh, basically it's always been focused around Vaporwave in general um, and I've kind of always aimed to uh, release stuff that's kind of underrepresented in the scene um, in more recent years, uh, I've been mostly focusing on barber beats, so uh, stuff like Macro Blink, and uh, I'm kind of uh, made the whole lineup smaller. Uh, so now it's just a bunch of my close friends, basically. I'm trying to understand the sound of vaporwave and the sound of barber beats being distinct from one another. So barber beats is a subgenre of vaporwave, um, but uh, vaporwave has a lot of subgenres. So. Um, uh, the one that really got me into it was classic vaporwave, so that's stuff like, you know, Magintosh Plus and Luxury Lead. Uh, the Slush Wave, which is more sort of ambient. Um, and yeah, there's just Signal Wave, which is kind of choppy stuff that's meant to sound like it's playing from an old radio. And um, in general, it's just quite a lot of, you know, different sub -channels. But uh, Barber Beats is just kind of a revival of uh, classic vaporwave, which... Um, <clears throat> kind of just focuses on that loungy style that Haircuts for Men uh, popularized. Um, and that's where the name comes from as well. Uh, I coined the term Barber Beats because, you know, Haircuts for Men, it just, it just kind of makes sense. So, uh, yeah, Barber Beats is basically just a subgenre of Vaporwave that's more loungy than others, basically. Yeah. yeah, I really like the whole lounge vibe to it. It's kind of like Mediterranean-y, like, or, yeah. or a bit like Arabic as well. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's pretty much the same as like other Vaporwave. It's just more sort of specific to that sound. But yeah, I'm really glad you enjoy it, man. Thank you. So uh, yeah, how do you think the show is going so far? Really good, bro. I was, I was nervous because this is the first show we've ever done. And like, um, you know, I'm so used to all the internet shit that it's kind of like, you know, I had to like fly people out here because I'm the only one living in the UK and like uh, one of the artists needed a visa and it was a process but it's it's going really well and uh, it's so packed in here and I'm just really stoked that you know we actually managed to sell all the tickets and you know people seem to be vibing so it's awesome yeah how many tickets have you sold a hundred yeah yeah well done guys thank you I, I appreciate it man uh, can you show us a bit of your merch then? Yeah, absolutely. So we got some vinyl here. Uh, we've sold most of it, but uh, we had some records from Macro Blank and Oblique Occasions. Now there's pretty much just two albums from Oblique yet left and like uh, uh, one collab between Oblique Occasions and Macro Blank. Um, Oblique Occasions is our uh, close friend that's also on the label. Um, we're just kind of everyone on the label just like really just tighten it it's like a family so um yeah it's just super sick is uh oblique here tonight uh no unfortunately not so we've got ron breger oscob and macro blank tonight uh but oblique he he lives in the u.s so we didn't manage to get him here but uh later this year we plan to do a show in la and uh we will most likely have everyone there with us like the whole team so we'll be about, we'll be five artists plus me and my wife. Uh, my wife, I'm <laughs> Borat, <laughs> funny. And uh, a few other homies that kind of work on the label in the background. So we'll, we'll be a big team when we go to the US. I'm really excited for it. Uh, we're trying to do that around July this year. So uh, it's gonna be sick. And uh, we've got some different tapes down here and uh, some CDs. 
Uh, these are two of the other artists that couldn't be here tonight. Channel of Dreams, my homie since like way back in the day. And uh, also Shoto Beats, my friend Zach. Um, he lives in the US too, so he wasn't able to make it tonight. We also got some clothes down here. The orange spiky hoodie. Yeah, the hoodie I'm wearing tonight is uh, from the Macro Blank clothing brand, which me and uh, Macro have been working on together since last year. Uh, we're gonna launch that on the 24th of Feb. Uh, no one knows yet, so yeah, we haven't announced it or anything. So, um, But we thought it would be cool to sell some hoodies here, like, you know, Whoever buys them, aside from me and Macro, they'll be like the first people to buy it, so... It's gonna be like rare, rare someday, someday. Yeah, man, we've only made a hundred of these, so, uh... Yeah, we're hoping they sell out and stuff goes well and we can, you know, keep being creative in the clothing department as well. Yeah. Have you guys um, had any sort of issues with... I know, like, DJs have to have, like, a certain licensing and stuff. Oh, yeah, no doubt. We'd be stealing. That's how it is. Um, yeah, we don't we don't get licenses. Clearing samples is... It's a lot of... We make enough money to get by. But, like, we don't make, like, a crazy amount of money. So the kind of requirements that the original sample owners will set, they'll ask for some crazy, like, sum, like a one-off payment, and it's like... We won't even make that from the whole release, so we just kind of release it and pray that nothing happens. And so far, we've been alright. Sometimes we get messages, they're like, take the shit down, and we're like, alright, cool. And then uh, we just do vinyl anyway. That's why we put it up. We announced it the day before we put it up. When it sells out, we take it down, and then... There's an interesting uh, platform called Tracklib. They're trying to make sampling more accessible to like the average person. Yeah, yeah. So they'll put up like kind of like obscure records. And um, they'll have done all the kind of legal stuff for you oh, and you just have right. to pay like a small fee and then that, that's oh, okay. it. Okay, yeah, that, that definitely sounds cool. It's just, we kind of like to... I don't know, that's what we've always been doing. That's the thing, like, ever since I was here, started, I've released like sample music and like... It's just vaporwave, innit? Every label does it, every artist does it. I mean, there's a small movement of people that are doing like, you know, vaporwave without samples and... You know, people hate on us, they're like, oh, it's unethical. And it's like, all right, but well, we've been doing this since 2015. If you have a problem with it, why are you in the vaporwave scene? This entire genre was built on stealing music and recontextualizing it. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, I don't really have an ethical standpoint on it. I just I just do what I do because I'm passionate about it. And uh, it's just how this shit worked ever since I got into it. I mean, I definitely would not be listening to like Mediterranean lounge jazz if it wasn't for Macro Blank. You know, obviously we make money off the cassettes and vinyl and stuff like that. But, and you know, from Bandcamp, when people decide to pay for it, um, you know, we get that money too. But in terms of the YouTube up uploads, we don't actually make anything from that because they get copyright ID'd. The original artists actually get all of the YouTube money. In a way, it's kind of like making them money too, but I understand why some of them get upset that we sample their stuff because obviously we do the physical releases that they don't actually get anything for that so that's also a big reason why we don't put this stuff on Spotify with physicals obviously that takes our investment and you know time so it's more it's more or less paying for the work we put in to ship it and all that whereas with YouTube the original artists get all the money from the uploads and also we don't put the stuff on Spotify at all because we feel like that's kind of interfering with their market the majority of the people we sample they're not going to release cassettes or vinyl but they do use you know spotify that's like one of their main sources of income so we don't want to interfere with that we're just trying to do our physicals and clothes and stuff like that and then the original artists can have the whole like spotify market we don't want to you know can you try to describe like what exactly it is you love about vaporwave i've always struggled a lot mentally i struggled with like drug addiction for a long time and uh I'm mostly not doing drugs now, but like when I was younger, I was like addicted to Xanax and uh, opiates and stuff. And um, I have uh, anxiety, so I'm like on anxiety medication. I guess what has always attracted me about Vaporwave is I love the sound, but uh, it's mostly like the sort of emotions that the music kind of expresses. Um, I find if I'm depressed or anxious or whatever, it kind of helps me to kind of, you know, snap out of that and just feel better. So through running this label, I've met some incredible artists and, you know, everyone that's on Alice City are close friends of mine. Like, Macro Blank is the best friends I've ever had. Like, for real. Uh, you know, we talk for hours several times a week and it's, um, it's awesome to just get to do this with people that I genuinely love, like family. It's, it's sick. Yeah, it's awesome. So... 
Vaporwave has really changed my life. I do this full time now since September last year. Just to get to do this with close friends is just, it's amazing. And you know, stuff like tonight, it's crazy seeing all these people coming here for us, you know, like it's, it's very heartwarming. Aldo City is a big label these days, but it started very small and a lot of people think, oh, it's some corporate sh Nah, I run this from my apartment. I was just like everyone else, and we just happened to like, you know, get more popular. So it's just crazy to me. Like a lot of the time, I don't even think this is real because it's just stuff I could have never imagined. I'm really thankful, yeah. What's your name? My name is Jay. So you're Jay. You've been highly recommended to me as being one of the one of the main guys. I just feel like you have like a natural charisma that people are kind of drawn to, like your brother. <laughs> natural charisma. <laughs> so who are you? My name's Harvey. Cool. Yeah, this guy oh, get, where's the camera? Um, I uh, <laughs> my mate music under the name Pizza Hotline. You're you know, Pizza Hotline. I am. Yes, that's my my artist name. Yeah, yeah. Is this Kid Neon? I'm really hungry right now, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, There's a pizza shop across the road. Dude. Dude. And I've already had a pizza. I'm, I'm so sad. Can we just shout out um, uh, Yard Sale Pizza? It's the best pizza I've ever had in London. Uh, I concur. And it's just great pizza and they need a hotline, that's all I'm going to say. People need pizza fast and the only way you can get things fast is by dialing a hotline. So, cool Harvey. It's that simple. This was about music and then now it's about pizza. I'm not really sure where, where we devolved into pizza, but it's fine. We're standing across the threshold of the best pizza place in London according to Time Out. So. We're putting people on. So do you make music at all? I do make music sometimes. Is it Vaporwave? Some of it, some of it's not. Do you do some like original stuff as well? Yeah. Apparently he makes music. Jay makes great music. He's being so humble about it. Let's unhumble him. Tell us about your, uh, what was the album you gave me called? Straight to Video. Straight to Video. I thought it was straight to VHS, but it's straight to video. I, he gave me the tape. I took it home, I put it on. Sick vibes. I really, really loved it. You know, they, he runs a label with his brother called My Pet Flamingo. Shout out My Pet Flamingo. Great label, very like incredible, wonderful record label. What about you? My name's Harvey. Um, I've <laughs> well, I've said who I am. What do I, what do, I do? Um, one of the main things I'm doing at the moment is making 90s and noughties video game star music. This is this is Mrs. Hotline. She oh wants my to gosh, I'm sorry, camera. I didn't know. Mrs. Hotline. Mrs. Hotline. <laughs> I didn't know you were having an interview. That's fine, you can do you're Ruth, now you're having an interview. Are you married? Uh, no, he has She wishes, ring. she wishes. <laughs> He's had a Miss Hotline. <laughs> no, he, he actually um he actually hid the ring in um a, a box of his cassettes. What is that? Yeah. Uh, the, before he was popular, the cassettes didn't sell, and then he sold the, the cassettes last night, and they sold out in an hour. Wow, that, that is so romantic. Yeah. This is the passion. You better not, better not let the ring go in one of the cassette boxes. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that our song? That's our song. I love this tune, man. <laughs> Vapor cheese grater. Vapor. Ruth thinks it's Vaporwave played through a cheese grater, which I think is a bit offensive, but still funny. Can you dance to this? Um, yes. <laughs> I really want to support your YouTube channel. I think it's fantastic you've come here with your camera and all your gear. We're both dads and we rarely get to have nights out. Dad life. <laughs> dad life, don't do it. Hashtag dad life. Don't do it. If you do it, you'll end up like us. Hi, Ron Breaker. Hello. <laughs> so you were saying Macro Blank taught you how to do DJing. He teached me how to um, work with um, record box and his um, table, whatever it's called, and how to tempo match. And uh, yeah, I got it down in one day. I never did something like that before. But the show overall was really good. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Switzerland. I'm Serbian, but I was born in Switzerland. How did you come up with the name Rum Breaker? I was hoping you would ask that. <laughs> I make ROM hacks, specifically Mario World ROM hacks or Mario hacks. And sometimes they tend to crash or break, hence ROM Breaker. That's interesting. So like, I used to play ROMs when I was a child. So I guess that comes into the whole nostalgia vaporwave thing. What is it that makes you want to create vaporwave as opposed to other types of music? Well. I like the sound, I like the, the, the rhythm, I guess, the aesthetics, obviously. I don't listen to that much classic Vaporwave anymore like uh, I used to, but yeah, Barber Beats is just uh, my go-to now. Yeah, Barber Beats is like the kind of offshoot of Vaporwave I've been hearing. Yeah, it is. Um, it started by haircuts for men, everyone should know that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people have been talking about haircuts for men. Will he be featured in the, their documentary, do you know? No, he will not. <laughs> Is he a difficult man to get hold of? Yep. Shout outs to you, Andre. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, you had a great night. I was listening to some of your beats. I was in here, but I was thinking this is a good set. 
yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm also proud of it. Half of the tracks in my set were, half of them were sample based and half of them were original. I don't make sample based music anymore. I make original music. That's really cool. Do you feel like uh, those in the vaporwave community are a little bit like uncomfortable with that? Why should they be? I mean, I could. They, they can't stop me. <laughs> Nobody can stop Ron Breaker from breaking the rules of vaporwave. Yeah, um, there's a couple more. Message me later. Message me later. Also make sample free barber beats and uh, Machina Pensant, I believe they're called. Where can I find your set? from today. It should get posted by Allo City World on their Bandcamp, I believe. Thank you, Ron Breaker. You're welcome. Are you still are you still working while we're doing this? Is that how it's gonna go? You're gonna be reaching for you're gonna be reaching for clink film in the middle of it. Yeah. You must stop working immediately. This is Do you want me to stop working? Yes. Okay, cool. Can I sit down? I just resign actually. Um I could but this place will crumble without me, right? Why is my stool so much smaller than yours? Because you're taller than me. It's actually embarrassing. Publicly humiliated. You don't want me to turn it up. Leave it down, yeah. Yes. Yes. I can't do any more lift music. Let's do that again. Lift music. That's all we've been listening to. Floor eight. Yeah. Or like you know when you go to like a really posh restaurant and you're eating your steak. Picture it. Sis, I feel like this is the music that they listen to at the Vogue after party. It's that. But it was fun. That's another thing. How were people dancing to this? Where's the dancing? Did you hear anything that you liked? Was it a Dua Lipa song? I think they did a Dua Lipa song. That's the one I was like, oh, I know this song. And then after that, but there was a part, there was a song that they played that actually made me... <laughs> I can't say it, I feel so bad. It actually like made me feel sick. Like, <laughs> no. that makes me sound so bad, but like, it was a minute, but after I just, I wanted to vomit. Like my insides felt bad, I had a headache. Like I was telling everyone, I was like, I think I need to go home because I just felt. Like bad frequencies, bad vibes. Yeah. Can you describe the sound of this song? Vapor cheese grater. Vapor. <laughs> Ruth thinks it's Vaporwave played through a cheese grater, which I think is a bit offensive, but still funny. It was just noise. Like we also thought the speakers were broken. Like it, like it sounded like something went wrong. I know which one you're talking about. Isn't that our song? Man. That's our song. I love this tune, man. <laughs> yeah, and then there was a customer here, and we were like, "Oh, like is that everything okay?" And he's like, "Oh no, this is a song." And we're like, "This is this is a song." And then you had like three guys over there like dancing. Oh! And I'm like. What are we dancing to? This sounds like a technical error. It was weird. No. Maybe it was just techno, like the genre. No, thank you. I think I'll give the music tonight a one out of ten. One out of ten. I'd recommend it if you're going to sleep. Or if you're ascending the floors of the uh, Empire State Building. Going up. That, that'll be it. Or like having a steak night. Yeah. There you go. I feel like this is what it is. They've come up with this new genre of music and I'm here like, it's boring. I'm like, it sucks. So I feel bad. I am. This is like, great. They can't, they can't host this, these events here anymore. Do you understand? Like, when this goes out, it's over for you guys. Please come back. I lied. I lied. I lied. I lied. It was great. I give it a 9 out of 10. It was fantastic. Tell us about folklore. I love folklore. Like, I've worked here for like two years. It's really good. Like, the events that we have here very different so one day you're listening to I don't know this and then drum and bass and then we'll have like a burlesque show so it's it's weird but good weird and we have a cat you do have a cat the cat stayed downstairs the whole night she never stays downstairs she likes the vibes I think folklore is like a little gem and I because it's in like East London Everywhere's been urbanised, you have Box Park, Shoreditch, and then you have here. It's weird. Yeah, this is a bit, this is a bit off. I'm from what? Birmingham, innit? You're from Birmingham? Ah, oh, I love Birmingham. I was in Birmingham for a while. Do you think my Birmingham accent's really good? <laughs>
what do you put like people from london like really exaggerate how northern we sound it's like we don't okay, sound that northern. guy on the train and he was like it raw tinks in here is that a thing yeah we say raw why it, it means like very so just say very Nah, but you gotta have your own like you gotta have your own slang in it you guys have like oh that's calm we have raw raw to everything nah it raw tinks in here. What's tink? No one even says tinks to be honest, but the raw part, like, I can I can get behind that. So is it, would you go, it was a raw good party? Yeah, I guess you could say that. And then, See, it's no. It's not, it's not used that exactly like that though. It's more like- uh, Okay, you use it how yeah. you would, and I'll rate it. I'm gonna go back to my school days. Let me just go into that place. Oh, I remember when everyone used to be like, <laughs> She's a chung ting. But I feel like chung is the raw of Birmingham. Huh? Yeah, chung. Ah, oh, she's chung, man. What? Or oh, buff ting. Chirps, right? But no, they raw. Raw. Would you say oh, the music's. I don't know. How would you use raw? It was raw elevator music. What did you just say? It's like raw is like totally, it's like it was totally elevated music. It was totally raw. It was raw. It was totally raw, bro. <laughs> no, you wouldn't say that, but um. Okay, what other like weird Birmingham slang can you like? Yeah, I can give you a, another one. Um, there's one called um, about. So um, if you're like talking smack on me, if you tell me that I'm ugly, I'll be like about ugly. As if I'm gonna like reply to what you said, but I won't reply. I'll just say about ugly. Are you happy with your footage? I'm really happy. I just need to get. I just need to get macro blank. Like that's the only person I need to get. About ugly. Right. It's like about, as in like you kind of saying like what you're talking about, but you're just shorting it to about. Oh. I don't go about ugly. You're clapped. About clapped. I feel like we more do it with our face. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, your friend cleared that up for you. There we go. Birmingham accent that throws it off. <laughs> yeah. About, about, yeah. about ugly. All right. Um, yeah, I think we're done here. What's your name? Ida. Ida, it's been a pleasure. NP, Matt's B. See, I'm just a side character. Um, we might see each other on the train one day. And be yeah. like, oh yeah, I swear I did a video. And then just carry on. Just so, so happy. I was part of your movie and I hope you're happy to be a part of my movie. It's, yeah. it's been an honour to just sit behind the bar, like I've never really been behind the bar before. There we go, there we go. Would you like a drink? Let's go! Yeah. Rum and coke, 100%. Yeah. Wait, hold on, wait. <laughs> wait, do you want to do the eye? ASMR. It's ASMR, I'm bartending ASMR. We listen to a lot of Garage. Right? See, yeah, who doesn't? I like, I like Garage, yeah. Who doesn't like Garage? Do you like... Garage? Who doesn't like Garage? I love Garage! It's Garage, mate! Here you go! Garage! Please, please stop saying it like that. Garage Nation. If you like Garage, Garage Nation is, is really good. You're stressing me out, okay. About Garage Nation. It's raw. It's raw. Oh, raw good. I've been teaching a Birmingham slang. It's raw. Like raw. Good. Yeah. See? Like I'm being mocked right now. Yeah, you Right, bit passag here. <laughs> Finish my drink, alright? I know. We're just gonna get the cup, and now we're gonna put the coke in the room. So good. Go on. Sorry, let me stop. Carry on. It was a surname. It was a last name. That's done. And now we're going to close it. Can I have a straw with that? A straw in the drink. Content. That was 14 minutes of just pure, like, just rock gas. Just pure trash. Quality trash. It was raw trash, though, still. About Balenciaga. About Balenciaga trash. Oh, I'm leaving. Hello, Marco Blank. Hello. I'm happy to be here. Happy to meet you. Uh, we've just done a show tonight, Barber Night. Uh, we're here with uh, the ACR team. Uh, there are three artists. 
Ron Breaker, Oscar, I played too. Yeah, it was such a great night. Yeah, I'm just so tired. Yeah, you must be tired, like being on your feet for that long during a set. And then that orange thing as well, like that hoodie. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, it is a little bit, uh, you know, thick and stuff. But yeah, it's okay. I had to represent a little bit the, the brand and stuff, I guess. I'm so happy that I wore orange today. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, damn, I did not notice that. That's great. Yeah, we'll look really good on camera. Honestly, bro, like, I don't know if you consider yourself a, a DJ, but like, you would be a good DJ. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, I mean, I know what DJing is about. DJing is about, you know, because I did plan my set. Real DJing stuff is about, you know, like kind of vibing with the crowd, reading it, you know, selecting good stuff, like on the spot. I kind of took a little bit to plan it out, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really a real journalist, you know, I had to plan this out, you know, like these questions are coming from my phone. One thing I noticed is that you pulled up uh, Dua Lipa in there. So like when you did that, like I was freaking out like, oh. <laughs> Cause I hear this song being played in like the like the super the supermarket aisles, and I'm like, this is actually a tune. Like this Dua Lipa chick, she's alright, but like you've slowed it down. Like, it wasn't actually me. It was Oblique Occasions. He's uh, my my dear friend, Oblique Occasions. Uh, he's also part of the ACR ACW team. Uh, yeah, that's one of his tracks. He released it and you know there's something coming up from him that has a lot of stuff like that you know he showed it to me i was so excited so i had to draw some of his tunes there he has bangers yeah burial as well you know burial <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my entire album, Occult, is basically Burial, like, yeah, I, I love that person, that human being, just, wow, wow. I, I grew up uh, listening to Burial, you know, listening to a lot of dubstep, stuff like that, and I really have a deep appreciation. I keep up with every new Burial release and stuff, so, yeah, my new favorite now is the, is the, uh, the Dawn thing I hear is, and it's just, oh, it's just so it's crazy, the anti-dawn, yeah, so it's crazy, yeah, I love Burial. Uh, yeah, I can really see the passion you have for, for Burial, like, I've only heard really the Untrue album, I, I, the one before that as well, um, the first two albums, I've listened to those, but after that, I, he kind of like became less famous and kind of slipped into the, like, the under, under my radar. Uh, but I guess, is he still releasing music like regularly or? I think it's sort of regularly, uh, he's had a recent release sort of, um, he mostly, had, what, from what I've heard it's less from the stuff that, you know, people know him from, for like the, you know, Untrue and all of that, uh, like kind of less beat oriented, but it's still the same vibes though, it's just more ambient kind of, and yeah, it's just great, I just love production like that, it's really inspiring. Yeah, and then like, who else would you say is your inspiration behind, you know, doing th this kind of music? Mm, uh, well, you know, I take inspiration from a lot of the vaporwave stuff, mostly, you know, people will draw sim similarities between me and Haircuts for Men. I definitely took some inspiration. Nowadays, you know, I just kind of do my own thing, trying to, you know, keep seeing where this can go. Uh, yeah, it's mostly just vaporwave stuff, I would say. I have like little few inspirations here and there, you know, like let's say someone like Burial, right? Because I release uh, uh, some odd stuff here and there, but uh, it is mostly just down tempo, cool, chill, mostly vaporwave stuff. Why is it that? Mediterranean lounge music sounds so much better when it's been slowed down. I could not tell you. It's just, yeah, that's the magic behind it. it. It's just so good. Most of these tracks are a little too pitch, like the pitch is way too up or something. Like they're too squeaky, I feel like. And when you, and especially like those instruments, like slowing it down, having the pitch go down, it's just like so much better. It, it feels warmer. Oh, it's great because the vibe is already like made to be like ah oh, relaxing on the beach there's also a lot of uh you know beaches and clubs and the stuff like that that actually play a lot of 
actual lounge, you know? And I've heard it and I was like, ah, it's good. But then, you know, you add extra chill by slowing it down and that's what I can say about that. Yeah. Yeah, I totally feel that as well. Like slowing it down takes off that sort of like, yeah, that, that top end, the squeakiness of it, yeah. And like in there, the bass was like pumping. I'm not sure if you guys spoke to the engineer. Yeah, the the engineering was cr crazy. I you know thank everybody that helped me to you know make the sound work a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a key thing in this music, pumping that bass heavy. Uh, because I don't know, like everybody just lo loves a good bass, and you know, if it's chill, why not just make it you know crazier like that? I I just love pumping that bass on every track of mine, pretty much. Yeah. How would you describe the sound of Vaporwave and Barber Beats? Um, well, pretty much just, you know, what anyone could say, just kind of background music, chill stuff, uh, stuff that pretty much, you know, could live in the background and have some different activity. Because that's what helped me actually in the very beginning uh, when I discovered people like haircuts for men, dive deeper into vaporwave. It was um, just perfect material for whatever activity I had to do. You know, I would like try to graphic design, I would try to, you know, do anything, you know, work out anything. Yeah, I would just have that playing and in any situation, it just fit. It genuinely just fit. I was like, it's better than lo fi hip hop, but not too crazy. You know, so yeah, that's. I feel like that's the whole sound behind Bar Beats and even Vaporwave, a lot of it, yeah. I used it for writing because I used to be a copywriter. Like my job was to write articles. So that's how, when I discovered you, it was the algorithm recommended it to me like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I bet you love the algorithm, right? Yeah, the algorithm is crazy. Uh, I don't know. I literally just was very attracted to the whole crazy contrast stuff simple graphic design and you know cool fonts cool layouts i was so in love with that you know that's what because i tried graphic design beforehand like even before even discovering haircuts for men and um yeah i i even though like the whole vapor of aesthetic in general like i i love that so much and yeah i i started doing kind of doing it myself you know doing the whole graphic design myself and i see you know people like it too and you know i'm happy for that yeah i love the artwork take me back to the beginning so like i'm not sure how long you've been doing this when have you when did you start uh yeah i started in 2020 uh, around june something like that i released gatekeeper it's a very like super old thing um it's a small ep uh most of my you know work is sample based i you know it's a lot of planner phonics you know very in line with vaporwave and initially on Vaporwave, uh, Vapor, sorry, on Gatekeeper, I produced like half of that, you know, EP, like three tracks, of, you know, from there are mine, you know, uh, like fully mine, fully original. Some of them, you know, use heavily samples, but yeah, that original was an album, you know, full album, but I had to cut a lot from it because I was unhappy with it. And yeah, after that, I released Lost in Despair, uh, that whole album with like the face and stuff, like the red album with the... Uh, you know with the eyes and yeah that's when I was like okay I'm going to actually put some effort into finding some samples and yeah that's how it kind of all started I think see you see you great meeting you <laughs> so yeah it's sort of ironic that you started off actually well doing both like making your own stuff and also sampling other people yeah. the, I started like that but inevitably I was like yeah I feel like it has just a whole different, you know, it, it has just a different uh, vibe when you find different samples, different songs and, you know, just uh, kind of curate through stuff. It's really cool. Would you say that like hunting down samples is like the most satisfying part of the process? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, 
actually maybe the most satisfying part is having it all together and looking at the whole project and being like yeah th this all works and it's crazy you know I, I, I really love it um, you know it's kind of you know the whole sampling thing kind of controversial for some people but I feel like that whole thing is indeed what attracted me to this thing you know I also thought you know everything had to be original in Vaporwave but inevitably found out that you know damn it's all sampled and I was I was mesmerized by it because I was like how can a person you know like sit find stuff and just kind of like it all sounds the same you know it, it's quite interesting and yeah I feel like it's you know some people can get their own credit for you know trying to find you know samples in a, in a you know kind of manner like that you know that's what I appreciate about Hair Gas Women. <laughs> You very humbly state that you take no credit and because everything is plundered. Um, do you, when you read your comments on YouTube or when people you know tell you, you know, I love it. Like, is it? How does it feel to receive all the praise and credit for what you do? Um, I mean, I appreciate, but you know, I genuinely don't take credit. Like, I feel I kind of want people to read a little better, you know, my descriptions and stuff. Because yeah, like. I appreciate everybody, you know, that supports what I do, but I don't want people to think like, oh yeah, wow, I really enjoy the melodies that you made there because it's not me. Like, it's mostly samples and yeah, I feel like people should probably have a little bit more of a mentality like, um, uh, you know, this is kind of a mixed thing, you know, kind of a mixed kind of curated thing, you know, because I generally take no credit. It's more about the experience for me than, you know, the, you know, the, well, this sample sounds, the, like this song sounds this certain way. It's way more about the whole experience of the album. Was there a time where the music became popular or was it popular from, from the very beginning? When you made your first project and you put it out, did it get the kind of views that you're getting now? Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, I started on Bandcamp and later on decided to make a YouTube channel. Um, but I was extremely lucky because uh, Lois City, you know, Chris, the person I work with now, you know, my best friend pretty much. Um, yeah, the, he worked with Haircuts for Men, and when I started out, I was like, I can't find any more artists that are in this genre, so I guess I'll just do it myself. So I started making that stuff, putting my first few projects out, and I was thinking like, okay, who do I send this to? Because I need somebody to release it, you know, make some tapes, because I don't know if any of that works. I really like the whole tape thing, because I discovered that too. And, um... I sent Chris from Aloy City a submission thing and like through email and the thing the craziest thing is that Chris around that time he was telling me like he was not checking demo submissions at all so I sent one anyway I think he saw the notification he pressed on I pressed it you know and so like the cover because I attached it there I was like what is this and he listened to it replied to me and literally like I was just I was blown away and yeah working with Chris actually was the thing that you know gave me a little more popularity and stuff you know Chris always did insane stuff for my music you know with all the tapes and recently vinyl and yeah that that was kind of the whole process because then I got picked up by different people that promoted me it's a beautiful relationship you guys have like I spoke to Chris earlier and yeah it seems I didn't realize that all of this was like a family yeah it is uh i feel like these people are the only ones in this whole vaporwave thing slash barber beats thing that i can genuinely talk to you know and you know like enjoy talking to them pretty much like a lot of the scene is extremely toxic i do not sit on stuff like twitter i do not sometimes like i guess it was that i checked like some discord stuff you know for vaporwave but yeah, I I like sticking to my people and you know working with them, planning new stuff. It's great. It's great. Uh, 
uh, do you speak Japanese? Uh, no, a lot of people have that mis- misconception. Like they think that I'm from Japan or something. Weirdly enough, some Japanese people were like assuming I'm from Japan, but I don't understand how because like I use Google Translate and that should be so broken that you kind of understand that it's broken. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, not Japanese. I don't speak Japanese, but you know, it's for the aesthetic, pretty much a vapor of aesthetic, I guess. That's really cool. The Japanese came to you thinking you were Japanese. It means that your your translations are doing something. Maybe, yeah. I guess Google Translate just got insanely good recently. You know, they put in that work. I mean, you know, it, it's crazy. The Japanese people, uh, you know, would talk about my stuff in Japanese. You know, I would use Google Translate to read that. Uh, but some people would be like super angry, like, Damn, you know, this is not even like correct Japanese. Like, this is all poser stuff. I was like, who cares? <laughs> but yeah. It's for the aesthetic, man. I wanted to show you or share with you three of my favorite Macro Blank albums, but I can't pronounce some of them because they're in Japanese. Yeah. So the way I pronounce them is I know what I thought of in English, you know, before translating. <laughs> That's how I know. That's how most people, you know, say stuff because even like uh, Floral Shop from Macintosh Plus. That I think is yeah, it is in Japanese. Well, I took the deliberate of printing them off. I'm going to show them to you. And you can uh, you can read them. This is, this is it. Oh, yeah, this is it? Yeah. Whoa. I folded it like like origami. Wow, that's so cool. So these are your top three Macro Mag albums. These are my top three in uh, the Japanese art folding paper. Yeah, show, show the good people. I don't know if people can see this. This is crazy. Yeah. Wow, so we have um, Beyond the Void. This is the one, Beyond the Void. We have, yeah, Return to Sender. Yeah. And Macabre, obviously. Uh, yeah, well, this is kind of a mix actually. There's a lot of uh, unreleased material on this that will get on new albums soon. But it's crazy seeing this one because not many people like this one that much, you know, Beyond the Void. Why? I don't know. It just didn't catch up too much. I mean, some people like like it and stuff, but, you know, there's just different, uh, different material that, you know, is much more favorable, I guess. Didn't drop anything tonight uh, from beyond the void but i'm actually glad you like it <laughs> thank you yeah i find it to be um sort of like spanishy i guess um a bit more yeah a bit more mediterranean it feels yeah. positive it feels like a positive light cheerful record or the others seem more kind of dark yeah that's true um the vibe that most people refer to that beyond the void has typically is uh, referred to as balearic you know balearic yeah yeah, we we kind of call that uh, Balearic. It's uh, a little inspired from Tumble Down and Die, uh, an album by Haircuts for Men. It's it's like a whole sound that is less drum focused and way more, um, you know, trying to bring the beach waves like whole vibe, you know. So that's what people say when they they refer to Balearic, pretty much. Yeah. So what inspired the titles, you know, Beyond the Void and Return to Sender? Um, I don't know. I just, I just like try to think of something that kind of sounded cool. It's quite a challenge because the way I do it is I try to think of something that would sound cool in both English, but would look cool also in Japanese. Because like I actually have actively try to, for instance, the first uh, letter slash character thing, you know, this or this. Um they pretty much have to be different from something that was previously released. Like I'm trying not to repeat stuff because then people who don't even know Japanese, like me, for instance, um, they can remember the album by just looking at the first character, you know, just a little thing like that that could differentiate them between each other. Yeah. I love how much thought you put into this and (laughs) yeah, it's like they're not quite photos or they're not quite graphics. They're sort of like a strange blend. Um, could you reveal some of the mystery behind that? Uh, behind my style of uh, graphic design yeah. or something? Like in Macabre, I can't, I can't tell if that is a graphic or a photo or both or... Uh, I'm pretty sure it has to be a photo. I found that on Pinterest. I use Pinterest a lot. Uh, I tune my algorithm so, you know, it kind of has stuff like this. 
Um, a lot of it is uh, Renaissance kind of paintings, uh, weird, you know, fashion-ish artwork, um, statue stuff too, obviously. Uh, yeah, like see, for instance, this the Beyond the Void was. Uh, from some statues, you know, I traced the thing, started, you know, doing my own art, uh, line art, put some dots and all that. Uh, yeah, these are actually great. These are exactly like the three fields. Uh, so that's the statue stuff, you know, which I, I also tend to trace over like basically anything. Um, there's also Return to Center, which that's some Renaissance stuff. And Macabre, which, you know, that's the kind of weird ass fashion stuff. You know, I love that. So yeah, anything that is just kind of aesthetic like that, I guess, uh, that just has, you know, you look at it and it has like a strong feel about it. I just, yeah, that's what it is about. It's very striking. Um, so what is it that sets the tone like musically for a project? Like, do you have something in mind beforehand? Yeah, I do actually. Um, like each release is supposed to because the thing is each release isn't supposed to be focused on like one track per se right and that it's supposed to be focused on the entirety of that album slash ep slash whatever like i'm trying to kind of create a consistent vibe throughout the whole release you know so for instance like as you were saying you know return to sound would be like way more dark meanwhile you know beyond the void would be a lot more you know relaxing a beat stuff like that there's also like some dramatic stuff there too but typically there's like a kind of a theme throughout each uh, release that's consistent to some extent right because yeah it, it's it's just it's very striking when you grab stuff that you know just, just doesn't fit too much like the vibes are just you know all over the place i like creating something that's cohesive <laughs> Do you think he would have started listening to lounge music if it wasn't for haircuts for Ben or any of the barber stuff? Yeah, I don't think so. It's such a weird, obscure, uh, like, genre of music. I did not, I don't know, like, majority of people, I feel like middle-aged people, like, listen to that. And I don't know how they find that, you know? Like, seriously, I don't understand. There's, like, there's... You, you go to like a lounge, like a popular lounge song on YouTube and there's like people that just have like, you know, what counts as just the, you know, the boomer stuff to that. But, you know, like no offense to anybody. It's just like, I feel like that's the demographic to that. And I don't know, it's kind of funny, I guess. But it, also it's kind of cool how, because, like, you know, at this show there were so many young people that I guess listen to this and yeah, I mean, I'm glad I can bring something that, you know, typically you wouldn't listen to, you know, to people and just, you know, kind of find a new style or genre of music that way, yeah. That's really great, yeah. Sometimes I, um, when I'm listening to you on YouTube, the, um, the what is it, the, the content ID picks up the original song, so I go looking and, like, it is really obscure, like, you're right, like, the kind of things that are pulling up, like, on uh, Macabre, there's one... Called, I think it's Shooting Stars or Falling Stars by Faberge or something. It's got like 300 views and it's like a really weird artwork. I'm like, yo, Macro Blank makes this look so much like more glamorous. But yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. All of it is super obscure and uh, yeah, it's a lot of like you know, surfing the internet a little bit for those samples. Uh, yeah, whenever I find something that fits, I'm just like, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll just use this. Um, you know, no offense to anybody, you know, that I use music from. You know, they're fully entitled to like, you know, copyright striking my stuff. You know, I don't hold any grudge to that or anything like that. Whenever I've gotten like copyright strikes before, you know, on my channel, and you know, it is what it is, I guess. And you know. I'm not profiting directly off of the digitals. I always just tell people, you know, name your price, zero. You know, if people like want to donate or something, then that's appreciated, but you know, you don't have to. Some people like message me like, you know, I'm sending you some money, but you know, I'll send you more. Cause like now I'm broke or something. I'm like, 
no please like just keep that for yourself you know i deeply appreciate people who support me but you know there's a reason why all of this stuff is for free like i always encourage people to just download it for free because it's just edits and it's just uh you know stuff that is curated and you know just easy listening for everybody like you can literally just steal everything that i put on macroblank just re-upload it i don't care seriously there's, there's people can do genuine whatever they want yeah <laughs> Where are you from and does that kind of inspire you musically at all? Yeah, um, I, I don't really like share that a lot, but you know, I'll, I'll share this one time. Uh, I'm uh, from Romania, uh, you know, well, many people like thought I'm from the UK and it's understandable because I, I work with Chris, you know, I have like some UK tendencies, I guess my spelling, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I'm from Romania. That's where I was born, Bucharest, um, yeah. Yeah, the musically I was not inspired in any way from there. I listen to some Romanian music, you know, especially like the kind of the hip hop stuff. I guess you know, not in, we have traditional Romanian music, but you know that has nothing to do with what I do. Um, yeah, overall, just no inspiration from there. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for all the love. And thank you for being part with me tonight. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Please, can you sign my uh, sheet? I've got a pen here. You, you got a pen. I have a pen. You can use well. You can use either a gold thing or a biro. Just like oh, let me scribble this. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's let me sign this here. This looks so bad, but yeah. Hey, look at that. Okay, I want to get a thumbnail of us. I want to get you to hold this, and then I want yeah. someone to take a photo of us. Oh, should we? Okay. Yeah, that would be a good thumbnail, I think. Right. Um, but yeah, thank you otherwise for the interview. Yeah, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for taking the time to set all this up. This is you know, crazy work. And yeah, I don't know. Just uh, happy to meet you. You know, all that. Have a have a great night. Thank you bro, thank you. Just make this bigger, so it fits the thumb like that. You know, so like... Oh, like 16? Yeah, and then, yeah, it's like people would not... Yeah. And then, you know, just photoshop my face and put the... Oh, like under the hood? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that like such a great idea. Thank you, know, you helped me too with that. <laughs> I was just gonna like super it at the top, like, but like, yeah, just put the Oh, yeah, just, just like, yeah, just yeah. cut the thing and put that in there. You're gonna do that. I knew it for sure now. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> There's been a lot of intelligence in the house, like, um, really talk about this, like, in detail. Yeah. It's like, I'm very, um, I've learned a lot today. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Like, I'm really surprised. I didn't, I'm not saying that I didn't think I was going to learn anything, but like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chris? Can you go, Chris? Can you, like, do a thumbnail thing? 